Today I'm going to be changing a serpentine belt tensioner on a 2008 Ford F250 and we already started to take the serpentine belt off because it was squeaking and making some noise so we took it off and as I was spinning some of the pulleys I found that the tensioner right there was bad and that the pulley on the inside of it was making some grinding noises and things like that so we decided to go ahead and replace the whole thing just to see if that'll take away some of the grinding as you can see I've already loosened the belt from the alternator up there just so that way I have better clearance and I don't have to already do that I got to take the belt off of the actual tensioner but as you can see it's three bolts around the top that bolts into the actual engine block so once you take the tension off and take the belt off it's the three bolts and I believe they are 10 millimeter so we're gonna start taking that off and see what we get into I already pre-loosened them just to make sure that for the purposes of this video so that it goes a little quicker. Need a little bit of an extension. That one's pretty loose. Just don't want to mess up that plug right there. They don't give you any bolts with the new tensioner pulley so you have to be careful and make sure you don't mess these up because you you'll need to reuse these need a little smaller extension for this next one a little tighter quarters and then once it comes off you can wiggle it around Fix your hand through and once you get off that fan, it should come right out. There is the old belt tensioner with the three bolts over here that I will clean up before I put back in and then that is the new one as you can see the belt stayed right in place so you might actually be able to keep the belt on and just slide that pulley right on the belt as you were going to hook it up so now I'm going to get a little bit of MPL and clean up some of those bolts. With just a red rag and a little bit of MPL. Now that I've got all three of them up, I'm gonna put it, install it right back, get my light back, install it right back in that same hole where it's at, where those three bolts are right there. I'm gonna somewhat install it and then I'll come back and show you. As you can see, I've got it mounted and I was actually able to bring the belt back over it. I've only got one bolt in it right now starting to hold it. I just wanted to show kind of how it 
mounted back up and so I'm gonna put the other two in and I will I will be back the hardest part of every job just like normal is always getting enough light down in there so you can really see what you're doing take the extension off and go ahead and put just the 10 millimeter socket on so that way I can tighten it down fully so lean back up here in the truck and get back to tight Just tighten it down snug. There we go. And we'll go to this top one. I can get it to sit on there. It sat on that bolt a little more. Didn't want to, don't want to round the heads off, so you want to make sure it's sitting all the way against that washer. And just tighten it down to where it's pretty snug. Okay, so this is the actual, this is an actual serpentine belt tool to really take the, to take the uh, tensioner off. Well, to just break the tension to change the belt on it. But the reason I like to use this half inch snap on flex head ratchet is because when you're down in there, this, this one is very stationary. So once you get it in a certain position, let me get a little bit of light. Once you put that one in a certain position, it's there. You can't move it around or anything like that. With this one, with the teeth that it has, you can move it just in a little bit of different direction. So that way, you can get it just in the right angle and in the right situation to where you could really pry on it and get the most movement. That's why I like to use a little bit, a uh, little bigger of a ratchet. And as you can tell, the ratchet. It's just a little bit longer, so you just have that much more leverage on it when you're pulling back on it to try to break the tension. So there's a couple added benefits, especially when you're putting a belt on by yourself. You need all the leverage you can get and just to get it in the weird angle. But inside, you can see there's different sockets and things like that and different uh, holders. There's a 3 8 inch and a half inch that's on the breaker bar right now. There's some crow's feet and stuff like that. And different ways that you can connect it but what you do is you take it whether you're using the actual serpentine tool or you're using a ratchet you that that uh, square that's right there you just set this in to where it sets all the way down inside of it and then how you break it is you set this on and however it moves that'll be the way that it breaks and you normally you normally have to twist it to the right and another reason why I like using these ratchets is for that purpose right there. That is stuck inside, so when you got that off, you either have to wiggle it just a little bit to try and get it off, or, I'm sorry that went blurry, I don't know what happened. Or you've got to end up doing it just like that and pulling it out by hand. So that's why I like to use this. So that's what I'm actually going to use. I'm going to get back up in the truck and see if I can set this on here. I am standing on a ladder right now. I'm going to see if I can set that back on it like it needs to be and break the tension. And then I will and then from how I have it set up, I'm going to take the belt and wrap it back around the uh alternator. Is how I had it. That was the easiest way to put it on and the easiest way to take it off. So, if I can do this. Okay. So, as you can see, I have 
I have it set inside of the hole that it needs to set in. So what you do now is you take this and you push it to the right. And I don't know if you can see the see it actually going down, but you can see that it's lowering and raising. And you move that. And then once once you see that the tension's broke on it, you can grab the belt, fish it back the way it needs to go, break loose the tension. Once it's broke loose, you can see I have it back on the alternator. And then just to get this out. You just have to wiggle it just a little bit and it comes it comes right out with the light so now I don't even have to dig for that so I'll set this down over here that's why you can see that I like that so much it just helps with the movement of it so look that's back on that's completely on and the belt is back on so now that's all that's left is to check the other belts to make sure they're in a good position, which they seem to be. So next thing is just to start it up. I might move that one over just a little bit, actually. You want to make sure that it's sitting back on the pulleys so that when you start it up, it doesn't fly off. As you can tell, that one, I put it back. So now... All that's left is to start the truck and make sure it runs. I hear no noise. Grab my flashlight and watch the belt run around for a second. Now the reason all this started was because of this old one was making a bunch of noise. I don't know if you'll be able to hear it. It's definitely sounding like something in it's not happy. Those bearings or something's no good in it, so. I think we're good now it's time to check the truck make sure it's all good again and I'm going to make sure those bolts are still tight after I've ran it on the truck for a little bit and then after that I'd say we're good to go As you can see the truck's still running belt's still good it's went through the whole idle process so I think we're good I'm gonna turn it off and check those bolts Check and make sure that they're still tight and everything like that. We'll be good. I'm going to grab my snap-on with the 10 millimeter cobalt socket. Let me set that hanging right there. That is how you change a belt tensioner on a 2008 Ford F-250 Super Duty XL.